Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again with another video, and today I'm going to be covering the basic movement of Rivals of Ether. Now the ceiling to Rivals' movement is pretty high up, so it can definitely seem really daunting when you're dipping your feet into it for the first time. Now the number one thing I have to recommend when talking about movement and improving on it is practice. The more time you put into your movement, the crispier it's going to be, and the better you'll be at baiting, whiff punishing, and overall just giving yourself way more opportunities to hit your opponent. So wave dashing. Very easy in this game. For wave dashing, you can press the jump button and the parry button, whatever that's set on your controller scheme. At the same time, you will wave dash in place. You can even hold down. And wave dash in place. Diagonal back, diagonal forward. Completely back, completely forward. So anywhere within the general left and right directions on your analog stick uh, and, and below. Anywhere in between there, is a direction you can wave dash. So micro spacing with wave dashes is possible. As you can see, I can go even this short in distance per wave dash if I want, or I can go this wide in wave dashes if I want. All comes down to what the moment requires or what you prefer to do in that moment. So why do we wave dash? We wave dash because we want to have access to all of our grounded options whenever we want. You don't want to have to run and then stop and then jab or down tilt, up tilt, whatever you want to do, right? Smash attack. Well, in this game, it doesn't really matter because you can smash attack while running. But, you know, in general Smash games, you would have to stop in order to do these certain options. But with wave dashing, you can approach while doing these things. Or, even more importantly, funny enough, is retreat while doing these things, right? This opens the door to many possibilities many different interactions, many combos that can now work because you can move while doing an action. Well, it's more like you're sliding while doing an, a an action, but you get my point. Another important option when you're learning movement is to learn how to wave land. So again, how you do this is you hold a direction right before you get to the, the uh, platform's height and you just press the parry or air dodge button and you will be forced onto the platform. If you don't hold a direction though, this will not happen. Unless you're like absolutely perfect. Why do we learn how to wave land? Well, it lets you get to the ground much sooner than just doing this. And floating down or even fast falling down, waiting for the apex of your jump, it's gonna take a while. You can cut that time short by immediately wave landing on the platform. So I'm going to tell you when I start the actual air dodge animation. So let's do it right here, okay, right? So I haven't pressed the button yet, actually. Uh, as you can see, Forrest Burns' legs are not even above the platform yet. But if I input an air dodge in the next frame and hold down, the game pushes me up and onto the platform. I'm holding down an air dodge when I, when I did that. So the game is really nice when it gives you a little extra boost if you're almost at the ledge. So this means you can wave land much sooner than melee where you have to be above the ledge if you want to land in that game you can do it when you're almost there so because you get to the platform sooner let's say i not crag up oh one second i can do something like that because i wave land i can already start inputting my up tilt much quicker than if i had just done this and waited so there's the one of the benefits of wave, wave landing and another benefit is just the general movement speed, right? So again, me doing this and then me doing this is so slow compared to me doing this. I'm here much faster, I can avoid an attack, I can reposition, think, I can put myself somewhere I need to be with swiftness, right? This is why you wave land. Again, it's very important to know why you do these things and not just how. And the last general thing which every character has I want to talk about in terms of basic movement is the dash dance mechanic. You want to bait your opponent into thinking you're going to do something or you just want to remain ambiguous in your next option. So by doing this, they have no clue if you're going to keep going back, if you're going to approach, throw out an attack, or jump like there's there's uh, many options available here from the dash dance. 
As you can see, the speed of dash dancing is very fast, whereas this is much slower. So, what do we do if we want to keep dash dancing? Let, let's say my opponent is over there, and I want to apply more pressure, but I can't dash dance past this certain area. So what you do is, you wave dash. Yes, you can wave dash any, any time while you're dash dancing. So you can do something like this, wave dash closer, wave dash away, wave dash in, wave dash away. They have no clue what you're about to do. So they might parry, you might beta parry, and then punish with a dash attack. They might try to attack you, but you, you know, you dashed away. And then you <laughs> attack. Wave dashing, wave landing, and dash dancing. In combination, it gives you a lot of opportunities to whiff punish, bait, and just move around very fast in preposition. The next portion of this video is going to be me going over the ba basic and general movement options that each character has that is unique to them and allows them to move outside of their wave dash, wave landing, and dash dancing general options. So what a ledge boost is, comma, is when you run off a platform and right as you run off the platform you hit the jump button. This allows characters to get a, a, a boost in momentum when they jump. Claren has one of the best, if, if not again, the best ledge boost in the game. Ledge boosting with Forest Burn doesn't go as far as Claren. Hers is ridiculous already, so the fact that he goes almost that, almost as much is still quite crazy. Zeta Burn has his down special. The fact that he can cancel this by pressing the R button, or the shield button, you know, parry, he will flip. And this flip can be ledge canceled. Raster has Slipstream. That's it. Just kidding. But what Raster actually has as movement option is his dash attacks because his can dash attack off a platform with a hitbox. And when Slipstream is out, this goes much further. Now, not only can Eliana fly by just holding the jump button, but if you're in the air with some momentum and you smash attack, you will gain a boost in that direction or the opposite direction at which you smash attack. Absa. Or Kane's forward air. If you don't input a direction, the bubbles will carry you backwards. And if you're going that direction when you input the forward air, you get crazy horizontal reach. And if you do two of these, <laughs> or three, you go zoom. Edelus is pretty straightforward. You put down ice and you, and you dash deck. The more ice you have, the further your dash deck goes. And because he can jump out of his dash tech, wave dash out of his dash attack so he can do obnoxious things like this Ronald's tongue allows him to fling himself across the stage and the longer the tongue's been out the more momentum he'll build up as you can see he can even make his bubble and fling off this I'm dead Craig has side B now, you may think that's a bad movement option, and it is. Unless you have something out already, like a pillar, in this case a burrito, or a rock. This uh, Mimi side B becomes a real option because you can actually move out of it and reposition. Maple's pretty fun with her movement options. She's already the fastest character in the game on the ground, and she has this up air. This little up air is a movement option. It gives her vertical movement. She jumps much higher if she uses her up air like a helicopter while rising with it. Now with Silvano, she's a lot like Craig with his movement option being his side B. You know, a bursting, moving option that uh, on hit cancels into something. Not only is Ori fast as heck in the air, he can also throw this ball and redirect himself to be very ambiguous. So a lot of times you'll see Ori's do something like this and then move around the top platforms while also throwing a hitbox at you. This is very safe. Now Shovel Knight's thing he kind of shares a maple being his rising up air, even though he goes much higher than her when he does his rising up air. As you can see, this guy is soaring through the clouds. Shovel Knight's infinite dagger can be jumped out of. An excellent option to close the gap between you and your opponent. Alright guys, it's been Rottweiler, and I hope you guys enjoyed the little introduction of the basics of movement in Rivals of Ether. See you next time. Peace. Flame to your neck, that's a choke slam. Better call a four to assassinate your whole fam. Absa in the back, she making sure this shit electrifying. Lyrics over, he so now we gotta say.